kids, here we go, another short story. Today we are going to take a look at All Summer in a Day by Ray Bradbury. All right, um, I have my annotation pens ready. I have different colors ready in case I need them. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Ready? Ready. Now? Soon. Do the scientists really know? Will it happen today? Will it? So I like that they're using questions here. Like, will it happen today? Will it? So I wonder what it is. <clears throat> look, look, see for yourself. The children pressed to each other like so many roses, so many weeds intermixed, peering out for a look at the hidden sun. You know, I wonder if it's intentional, which it probably is, because authors don't do things on accident, but they have so many roses juxtaposed here. Remember, we talked about that word juxtaposition. Um, and that's the idea that two opposite things are represented in the same area. So we have roses, which are um, associated, you know, they're beautiful. And then we have that um, juxtaposed with the idea of weeds, um, which, you know, kind of are a nuisance. So I wonder if some of the kids are roses and some of the kids are weeds. Um, so like so many roses, so many weeds intermixed, peering out for a look at the hidden sun. It rained. It had been raining for seven years, oh my. Thousands upon thousands of days compounded and filled from one end to the other with rain, with the drum and gush of water, with the sweet crystal fall of showers and the concussion of storms so heavy, they were tidal waves come over the islands. I love that, it's beautiful. Um, a thousand forests had been crushed under the rain and grown up a thousand times to be crushed again. So they're heavy rains, but they're crushing forests again and again. And this was the way life was forever on the planet Venus. Ah, look, we have setting. We're on Venus. People are living on Venus, so it must be set probably in the future because we don't live on Venus right now. So. And this was the schoolroom of the children of, rocket, of the rocket men and women who had come to a reigning world to set up civilization and live out their lives. So rocket men and women, they were probably on like a, a space shuttle. Um, it's stopping, it's stopping. Yes, yes. Margot stood apart from them, from these children who could, uh, who could eat, uh, from these children who could probably never, from these children who could never remember a time when there wasn't rain and rain and rain. So these are younger kids. Because she's away from them. It's been raining for seven years, and now it's going to stop. They were all nine years old. Oh, never mind. Whoop. Answered my own question. And if there had been a day seven years ago when the sun came out for an hour and showed its face to the stunned world, they could not recall. So they would only been two. So does that mean that the sun only comes out once, what did it say, an hour? And once every seven years? That doesn't seem like a whole lot, so... Sometimes at night she heard them stir in remembrance and she knew they were dreaming and remembering gold or a yellow crayon or a coin large enough to buy the world with. So that coin, they would be like remembering the sun. So these are all different ways to describe the sun, especially when you don't know that it's the sun. So, cause they were only two. So they might remember this yellow or this coin large enough to buy the world with, but not that it's the sun. Um, she knew they thought they remembered a warmness, like a blushing in the face and the body and the arms and legs and trembling hands. But then they always awoke to the tatting, uh, no, yeah, the tatting drum, the endless shaking down of clear bead necklaces upon the roof, the walk, the gardens, the forests, and their dreams were gone. All day yesterday, they had read in class about the sun. So they have school, that's good. And how like a lemon it was and how hot. And they had written small stories or essays or poems about it. I think the sun is a flower that blooms for just one hour. Oh, just one hour. Oh. Yikes. That was Margot's poem read in a quiet voice in the still classroom while the rain was falling outside. You know, as a reader, what I've noticed right now is that Margot is the only person's name who has been mentioned at this point. So that's telling me as a reader that she's probably a pretty important character um, and she's really quiet. I mean, it says that she read the poem in a voice, in a quiet voice in the still classroom while the rain was falling outside. Um, she's stood apart from the rest of the kids over here. So she's the only name in almost two columns that has been mentioned 
at all. And therefore, she's probably pretty important to the story. So we're going to keep going with the idea that how is Margot important to this overall day, basically? Ah, uh, you didn't write that, protested one of the boys. I did, said Margot. I did. William, said the teacher. That was yesterday. Now the rain was slackening and the children were crushed in the great thick windows. So they're like peering out, like they're all like trying to get a glimpse. Where's teacher? She'll be back. Even the teacher doesn't have a name. It's just where's teacher? So you have Margot, and then William's name was mentioned with an exclamation point by the teacher because he said something not nice. So I wonder if he's going to be one of those weeds that we talked about earlier in the piece. Because now we've only had two names mentioned and the teacher doesn't even have a name. It's where's teacher? Hmm. She'll be back. She better hurry. We'll miss it. They turned on themselves like a feverish wheel, all tumbling spokes. Margot stood alone. There's another character trait of hers or telling. It's a characterization that the author has done, not a trait. She was a very frail girl who looked as if she had been lost in the rain for years and the rain had washed out the blue from her eyes and the red from her mouth and the yellow from her hair. So she has lots of colors are being associated with her. She was an old photograph dusted from an album, whitened away as, and if she spoke at all, her voice would be a ghost. Now she stood separate, staring at the rain and the loud wet world beyond the huge glass. So she seems almost like she's unnoticed often, you know, um, I don't know if I spelled that correctly, um, but she's not always noticed. You know, she's a photograph dusted from an album. If she spoke, her voice would be a ghost. So that idea, I wonder if people don't always notice her um, at all. So what are you looking at? Said William. Oh, there's William again. Okay. Margot said nothing. So we got these two characters. I'm kind of getting the feel as a reader that that William is our antagonist. Remember, that's kind of the bad guy. And Margot is our protagonist, which is the good guy. So speak when you're spoken to. He gave her a shove, but she did not move. Rather, she let herself be moved only by him and nothing else. They edged away from her. So, well, like by him, like it's not that he pushed her hard to move her necessarily, but what I'm taking away is that she don't want to be by him. They edged away from her. They would not look at her. She felt them go away. And this was because she would play no games with them in the echoing tunnels of the underground city. If they tagged her and ran, she stood blinking after them and did not follow. When the class sang songs about happiness and life and games, her lips barely moved. Only when they sang about the sun and the summer did her lips move as she watched the drenched windows. So if the only time she's reacting to anything is when they talk about summer this day must be super important to her because it's the you know one day every seven years for an hour or whatever and like this is when she sings like her reaction happens when there's sun so i am guessing that that sun and this day is what she it makes her happy and so she's kind of excited for it so and then of course the biggest crime of all was that she had come here only five years ago from earth and she remembered the sun and the way the sun was and the sky was when she was Four in Ohio. So she just came here. So she lived life with the sun. So that might be why she has such a positive feeling toward it. I mean, can you imagine just sitting inside all day, every day for seven years while it rains? You know, that idea of like depression and, you know, why can't they go out in the rain? Like, is something wrong? I know we're on Venus, but like, it says that they stayed inside for those seven years. So something must be up with the rain for them not to even go outside in the rain. So, and they, they had been on Venus all their lives and they had only been two years old when the last, uh, the sun came out and had long since forgotten the color and heat of it and the way that it really was. But Margot remembered, so she's separated because she just got there and everybody else has always been there. It's like a penny, she said once, eyes closed. No, it's not, the children cried. It's like a fire, she said, in the stove. You're lying, you don't remember, cried the children. But she remembered and stood quietly apart from all of them and watched the patterning windows. And that's probably why she stands apart from them too. Like she feels like she's in a totally different, you know, she's coming from something totally different. And once a month ago, she had refused to shower in the school shower rooms, had clutched her hands to her ears and over her head, screaming, the water mustn't touch her head. Hmm water. I wonder if there's 
don't know why. So after that, dimly, dimly, she sensed it. She was different and they knew her difference and kept away. There was talk that her father and mother were taking her back to earth next year. It seemed vital to her only or that they do so, though it would mean the loss of thousands of dollars to her family. And so the children hated her for all these reasons of big and little consequence. They hated her pale snow face, her waiting silence, her thinness and her pos possible future. Get away, the boy gave her another push. What are you waiting for? Then for the first time, she turned and looked at him. And what she was waiting for was in her eyes. Because what do you think she's waiting for? I mean, what are they all waiting for? But like, she has a totally different experience with, you know, what is she like? She is waiting for this moment. Well, don't wait around here, cried the boy savagely. You won't see nothing. Her lips moved. Nothing, he cried. It was all a joke, wasn't it? He turned to the other children. Nothing's happening today, is it? They all blinked at him and then understanding laughed and shook their heads. Nothing, nothing. Oh, but Margot whispered, her eyes helpless. But this, this is the day the scientists predicted. They said they know the sun. All a joke, said the boy and seized her roughly. Hey, everyone, let's put her in the closet before the teacher comes. No, said Margot, falling back. So these kids are saying it's all a joke. And do you think that who's who's right? Like, is it really a joke? They surged about her, caught her up and, and, uh, and bore her protesting and then pleading and then crying back into a tunnel, a room, a closet where they slammed and locked the door. They stood looking at the door and saw it tremble from her beating and throwing herself against it. They heard her muffled cries, then smiling. Obviously, we have some bullying behaviors because despite her beating and throwing herself and her muffled cries, the kids are smiling. The tur uh, they turned and went out and back down the tunnel just as the teacher arrived. Ready, children? She glanced at her watch. Yes, said everyone. Are we all here? Yes. Are we all here? No, Margo's in a closet. The one person who like wants this moment more than anything else is in a closet. Locked. The rain slacked still more. They, uh, they crowded to the huge door. The rain stopped. Look at these short paragraphs here. It was as if in the midst of a film concerning an avalanche, a tornado, a hurricane, a volcanic eruption, something had first gone wrong with the sound apparatus, thus muffling and finally cutting off all noise. So it's all of the blasts and repercussions and thunders, and then second, ripped the film from the projector and inserted in its place a beautiful tropical slide which did not move or tremor. The world ground to a standstill. The silence was so immense and unbelievable that you felt your ears had been stuffed or you had lost your hearing altogether. So imagine that constant drum of the rain. Earlier, they compared the rain to the drumming sound. You had this rain all day, every day for seven years. And then when it stops raining, only for an hour, one hour every seven years, imagine what that sound must be like. Like take the worst storm you've ever heard you know, and just that constant and then nothing. And there's not probably a living thing because it's Venus and it's like they're underground and if people can't be out in the rain and animals probably can't. So it's, they're probably not going out to like birds chirping and things like that. It's just silent. The children put their hands to their ears. They stood apart. The door slid back and the smell of silent waiting world came into them. The sun came out. <laughs>